Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Today, I want to share with you guys another smart home security camera. Uh, this is by a company called Conoco. If you haven't saw my other review I did on two of their uh, kind of in-house, uh, very affordable security cameras, I encourage you to check those out. Uh, this is one of their outdoor versions. So outdoor cameras are obviously uh, designed for the elements. Um, I always recommend anytime you mount anything outside, Again, depending on where you live, um, you know, the elements can play havoc with stuff. And I know they do say that this is an IP66 waterproof design. Um, you know, I've had a lot of different products and it's really kind of hit or miss with that. So what I would recommend, and I'm not downplaying this camera at all. Obviously, it's in my hand. I haven't put it to the test of time. Um, I find cameras like this that are truly designed for outdoors. I haven't had any kind of issues with but um, just, I think it's best to mount this somewhere where it's a little bit protected. So if you have an overhang, uh, that's always best. In my situation, I have a different brand mounted uh, that's kind of under an overhang on a piece of side molding that's white. Uh, and it tends to blend in a little bit because these things are really huge. You know, I don't think that they're the nicest looking thing out there, right? It's always nice to have cameras pretty discreet, but also on the flip side, it's also nice to have cameras that aren't as discreet. So what I do like about this is that they didn't make the whole thing white. So if you're mounting this to white trim, like in my situation, this is gonna stand out against that white trim and be very noticeable. Now that may or may not be something you're interested in or you're looking for, but what I like is the visual deterrence. Whether a camera works or not, having somebody come up to your place who might have ill intentions, um, they see this thing, it's not camouflage, it's not hiding, um, it's very noticeable, and they know that they're being recorded. So I think that's a really good deterrent um, You know, when, when you're getting something like this. Um, as far as the specifics on it, you have 1080p recording, uh, you have 315 degrees of pan and 90 degrees of tilt, uh, motion detection alerts, that's with their app of course, uh, it is a Wi-Fi camera obviously, um, these are 2.4 gigahertz compatible, not 5 gigahertz, most of the more affordable stuff like this um, is not going to be 5 gigahertz. Generally, I think they tend to use 2.4 because 2.4 penetrates obstacles a lot better. And I'll tell you that with these other cameras that are very, very small, little tiny antennas, remember, you can have the best router in the world with the most most amazing broadcast power, but it's a two-way communication. If you can broadcast a signal out, those little antennas have to be able to broadcast back. So you get a lot of delay. I found with cameras like this with the huge antennas, it really makes a difference. If you know they do take up kind of a big footprint, what I do is when I'm mounting mine, I'll kind of tip these down. Because remember, these are going to be up kind of high, usually where you're mounting these. And most people don't keep their router, you know, on, you know, up on the ceiling in a closet. So I'm uh, tipping them down. I don't think we'll have any kind of issues. In some cases, depending on where you mount it, you might want to adjust these again for the best signal and not be too concerned with the aesthetics. Um, you do have an onboard SD card, which is underneath this cap here. They do give you the screwdriver. And they don't give you the card. Just pop a card in there and you'll have a loop recording. Um, a lot of times with these, and I'm not from, I'm not too familiar with their app on this. I haven't messed around with it too much. Um, usually you can record on a loop or record just motion. Um, so pretty cool. Most of these cameras are all pretty similar and I have two of these by a different company and they are fantastic. Um, it has eight infrared LEDs in the front and color night vision. And what I found with the color night vision is a little bit confusing. Um, a lot of times there's three different settings. There's night vision, which is normal. There's double vigilance is what I've seen on, and I don't know about this one specifically, but these infrared LEDs uh, will obviously illuminate the night, but then also if there's motion detected, they'll come on like a security light um, and you can turn that feature off. So it's something I don't really like to use. I, I prefer the camera just to work as a camera itself and use security lights elsewhere. Um, I will tell you that with these cameras, uh, I know on the ones that I have mounted right now, uh, they, and I'm, I'm sure this is, you know, the same resolution, same quality. Um, the night vision is fantastic. So in a lot of cases, due to where you live, the amount of ambient light, you know, I have a lot of street lights and home uh, and security lights. Um, a lot of times the infrared LEDs won't even kick on, but the CMOS sensor is so good that you really don't need it. You actually, you can actually see at night better without actually having the infrared mode activated. But those are all features you can turn on or off. Um, most of these things have uh, the ability to set motion tracking, uh, whether it's two-way motion or one-way motion. You can set it to, uh, you know, if somebody's walking towards your house only to give you the alert. Um, it just, you know, I, I haven't played around with the, you know, the entire camera, but I'll tell you, um, you know, from what I've seen just by initial testing, uh, night vision's great, resolution's great, pan tilt features fantastic, and it's, you know, it's well-made. I can't say that it's, 
uh, any more well made than any other brand out there. There's tons of brands like this on Amazon, um, which brings me to the next thing. If you want to buy this, um, I'm going to link you directly to their website. It's 60 bucks, uh, which is pretty competitive, not a bad price. Most of these cameras I've seen upwards of $100, pretty competitive price. Um, this says it is compatible with the Echo or the Amazon uh, uh, assistance, which basically means you can say give the request to that assistant have it played on a, on a, uh, a TV on your network. Uh, let's say you're using a fire stick, you say, hey, you know, computer, whatever you may call your, your smart home assistant, uh, show me garage or show me driveway cam. And it'll put that camera on the TV. So pretty cool. I'm not sure how the pan tilt works with that. I, don't, I think you're just gonna get one standard image. It's not something I use very often. I just like to be able to use my phone and quickly access the camera. But it is an option for you. Again, IP66 water and dust proofing. Um, I never like to use the word waterproof because nothing is really waterproof. I like to use the word water resistance. Um, but just keep that in mind when you're mounting this, I would put it under an overhead. Um, it'll help to prevent the lens from getting dusty and dirty and, and as with anything like this uh, you will have to you know clean that lens dust is going to you know uh, uh, get attached to this and, and kind of ruin your picture uh, but you know just make sure you put it somewhere where you can access it um, in my situation I have mine pretty high up so in order for me to access it I have to get out a ladder uh, or use uh, kind of like a, you know, a rag on the end of a pole and just gently wipe the lens uh, that's really about it pretty straightforward um, I encourage you to click the link in the description. You can check out a little bit more about the camera, but it's all pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't mention two-way audio, but I believe this camera does have two-way audio. It's got a speaker on it, um, and it has the ability to turn that volume up or down, which is great. Uh, fantastic camera. As far as other things that you have in the box here, uh, you guys know I never really get too involved with showing off the box, but there's the box. And you get the power supply, you get an ethernet cable, you get your screwdriver and you get these weather weather resistance fittings and some screws. Uh, pretty standard. Nice flat cable. However, uh, you know, this is great, but to me, this is almost a waste of time giving you this because where you're gonna if you're gonna mount this outside, you're not really gonna be able to hardwire this. Uh, and it's a really nice flat cable. Pretty cool. This would be great, but really if you're gonna mount this outside, uh, you're probably gonna have to go through an attic, punch through a soffit. And, uh, you know, unless you are you have a home that has um, Ethernet ports ready to go for cameras, and maybe you, you know, self-contracted your home or the contractor had stuff like that already installed, uh, this is great. But to me, this is useless. This is not a camera that I think you would put inside your house. Uh, definitely not my home. Maybe a gigantic mansion. You might want to hide these in places. And, you know, the bigger the home, the less some of this would stick out. In my home, this would stick out like a sore thumb because my home isn't huge. Um, you do get the power supply, but um, I... I'd say maybe you get, it doesn't list it here on the box, but I would guess and say it's about 10 feet. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't list it. So which, let me just check their website. Yeah, it doesn't list the, the cord length. But again, with anything like this, uh, let, me just, let me just before I, so here you have your Ethernet port, which it comes to the cap. If you're not going to use that, you have your, um, your power port, of course. And as far as reset on this, uh, from what I can tell, the reset button is underneath the cap. Now this is a little bit of a pet peeve for me because sometimes you do have to factory reset these if you're gonna change your network up. Um, and so that's kind of a pain if you have this mounted somewhere in your house to actually get in here with a screwdriver and hit the reset button. Other other cameras I've seen have the reset button on the cord. Um, you know, pros and cons. The only, again, another thing I don't like about this uh, and cameras like this is that, you know, you're trying to hide the cords the best you can. And what I found is mounting these kind of near a gutter where you can tuck the wire behind the gutter, you're gonna have to bring it down. Most homes that I've seen do not have outlets mounted up in the soffits. Uh, my parents' house is one of those few outlets I've seen that have that. Um, if you are self-contracting a house or building a house, install you know have the electrician install some outlets up in your overhangs um it, it make it's a you know it's a great way to be able to hang christmas lights and to hook up stuff like this down the road one of my old co-workers was uh building a house and uh, i said man make sure your electrician go crazy with outlet boxes because you could always use an outlet somewhere with all this cool tech and you know whether it be you know for christmas lights or whatever have them in the overhang is great also have hardwired ethernet cable so you could use something like this i always recommend hard wiring over wi-fi uh, no matter what wi-fi router you go with they're all you know they're good but you really can't be hardwiring something 
So getting back to the cord, again, when you're hiding stuff like this, it's a little bit annoying because you have so much going on here. It would have been nice if this was maybe a removable option, uh, but you know they wanted to include you know uh, Ethernet. So um, I would honestly, on a newer model, I would just not have the Ethernet cable, um, or maybe have you know something underneath the uh, the mounting plate here where somebody could use an Ethernet cable hook up that way, and then make this cord a lot smaller. I like the fact it's white. Uh, but then they gave you a black power supply. In most homes, uh, this is going to stick out like a sore thumb. So that's the only downside with a lot of these cameras. And it's not just Conoco. And the reason I like to mention stuff like this is I'm not beating down the camera in any way or these brands. But, you know, these are how companies get better. And little small things like, you know, white power supplies. Most people's homes have white trim. I know there are some who maybe have black. But most of the time it's white. And this this is this stands out, and and in, in, you know as homeowners we care about the aesthetics of our homes. Uh, having a big black power cable running down the side of your mold, you know, side of your house doesn't look nice. Now again, if you mount it in your gutter, you can kind of tuck this, but this isn't long enough to even reach the camera. So um, again, I don't know why, but none of these companies that I've I've dealt with ever send you an extension. Good news is you can get extensions for these cables. They have a female end and a male end. Uh, you can get them in white and you get them in different uh, lengths and you can add some lengths, um, which is what I've done in order to discreetly mount the cables behind gutters or if I have to tack it somewhere you're going to see it, um, it's a white cable rather than this black cable and it doesn't stand out as much. So, Because you don't want somebody to be able to see the cable as well. You want them to think that this cable's hardwired inside the wall because otherwise they can just find it, unplug it or snip it, right? So just kind of keep that stuff in mind. Uh, when you are mounting stuff like this. But, I mean, very small pet peeve, very small right? Most of these cameras are the same. I know they can't account for every installation um, situation, but Conoco, you know, white. White would be much better, uh, or just include the extension cable, I mean, for the price. Because it's something that when you get this stuff, if you've never mounted cameras before, and this is kind of your new to the home security thing, um, you know, I can guarantee you, just like me, when I got this stuff, I'm like, oh, great, I'm excited to hook it up. And then you're like, all right, well, what am I going to do with this? So you can probably run this down far enough, but then you're going to plug into an extension. Now, this is not weather resistant, right? So you're going to have, you know, there's no point having a weatherproof camera if you have a, a power cord that's going to get wet. So all these things are things companies need to start thinking about. And I think that having something uh, that allowed you to, you know, again, a really long cable, I would say something like this. Even if you charge $10 more, you know, have a 20-foot cable built come with the camera. It'll really alleviate people's, uh, you know, annoyance when they get this and they realize, oh, you know, I can't finish this project today. So uh, if you are ordering this, go ahead, jump on Amazon and order the extension. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with the product. It works great. Uh, I will find the location for this. I did, like I said, I tested a little bit, not a full test. You know, I don't have it mounted. It's hard for me to do a video with the camera mounted on the side of the house. But um, I encourage you to check it out. Um, Conoco seems like a pretty good brand. As far as longevity, you guys know if I ever have anything fail, I'll come back and redo a video and let you know how long I got out of it and any kind of issues and what had actually happened. But uh, so far, so good. I mean, obviously, it's brand new. So, I mean, we're not going to have any kind of issues uh, most of the time right off the bat. But uh, that's about it, guys. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions, drop me a comment. Drop me an email. I'm always here to help you guys. Um, again, link is in the description to the extension and, of course, the Conica website. If things do change and these become available on Amazon, I'll update the link as well. Uh, anyway, guys, if you like the content, subscribe. Drop me a question. Have a great day, folks. Take care.